Hello all, welcome to the Linux rootkits for Red Blue Teams course on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we'll continue with kernel module basics and look at how we can play with parameters we pass to kernel modules using sysfs. So let's jump right in. Now all of us have probably seen the proc directory, right? So if we go into our VM and we go into the proc directory, we can see that, you know, there are a ton of files in here. So what are these actually all about? Some of you may know what it is, uh, but for others, well, slash proc is actually a virtual file system which is created entirely in RAM. And this contains a lot of runtime information which the kernel actually ends up sharing with the user space. Now, some of this information is read only so that user space programs can, you know, look at that information, display it, show it, etc. And in some cases, it is possible for user mode to actually write to those files and which may affect changes in the kernel. Now the original idea of slash proc was actually to provide information about the running processes from the kernel side to the user space side. So very old versions of the program PS were actually using slash proc uh, to go ahead and display information about running processes. Now, even though it kind of started off as, you know, sharing runtime process information, it quickly ended up morphing into a dumping ground for pretty much everything, right? So if we actually go and look at different files, we can actually see the CPU info file, which has information about the current CPU. Uh, if you look at call sims, this is basically all the symbols uh, which are currently there in various modules uh, in the kernel or whatever the kernel actually exports pretty much everything uh, and there are so many other informations right now these directories which you actually see with numbers well the numbers correspond to the process id and if you go to any one of these let's say 4317 do an ls uh, of course, we have to be root to be able to see some of the stuff. We can actually see that a lot of information is actually available about the running process, right? So what ended up happening is it became very, very chaotic. It became a dumping ground for pretty much all runtime information, information even about the hardware and whatnot. And because of this, it also ended up becoming very, very unstructured. And this is really where people said, you know what, it's going to be very difficult to clean up that mess, you know, immediately. So why not just go ahead and, you know, start working in a direction which is much more structured. And that's where they created, you know, the slash sys uh, or sysfs. And sysfs typically gets mounted to slash sys again. This is nothing but a virtual file system created entirely in RAM. The key difference though is that sysfs actually maps the different kernel subsystems, device drivers, and more importantly, preserves their hierarchy. So this allows us to navigate sysfs and look at these uh, different things in a much more hierarchically correct order. Pretty much every single K object or kernel object actually is mapped uh, to a file in sysfs. Now, the important thing to note here is sysfs is not a full replacement for slash proc. <clears throat> and right now, both of these will coexist and, uh, you know, providing different useful information. So let's actually look at the sys directory. And we can see that this seems a lot more organized even at the root uh, sys folder. And if you go inside module and do an ls, we'd actually find that every loaded module 
actually has a corresponding excuse me directory in here so just to give you an example if we were to load our hello world module and then we go to sys modules to an ls should be able to find your hello world module show up as a folder so let's go in there and you actually find that uh, different information about this module is actually present here so for example the reference count currently is zero so all of this is kind of mentioned in here now why is this important now in the last video if you remember we had talked about module input parameters etc um, let me go there and we had seen that the third option in here which is perm we had taken as zero now if you notice the help file actually tells you if perm is zero then the variable will not appear in sysfs but if any other permission is actually granted here then it will appear in sysfs with that permission set applied so what we would like to do if we would just go out of this directory go back to class and then go back to this video's uh, directory and open up C file. So what we would ideally want to do is now these two parameters which we had looked at in the previous video counter and message. We want these parameters to be available in sysfs and this is the permission we are giving it. I'll talk about the permissions in just a bit. And based on that, it will be possible for us to change these values even at runtime. So in the previous video, we did an ins mod and we, you know, assigned different values to these variables. And of course, we couldn't change it anymore. However, if we map these to sysfs and give appropriate permissions so that the root or other users can modify these, then this can be modified at runtime. So let's try and understand the permissions. So of course you have the core base permissions, which is, uh, you know, if you, if you look at how to kind of read this, so we have read, write, execute. So S underscore I RWX stands for read, write, execute user, right? U for user. Another uh, option we have is, you know, R user, which is this read user, W user, which is write user, and X user, which is execute user. Similarly, we actually have read, write, execute for the group, and then read, write, and execute separately for the group and then others, right? And then we can take different combinations of these and then create, uh, you know, other combinations like read, write, execute, user, group, and others. And this is what this would be, an R between all of these and so on and so forth, right? So these are located in these uh, directories. So inside include UAPI Linux stat.h line 30, this is what you'd find. And under Linux stat.h, you would actually find these other permissions as well. So what I've done in this sample code compared to the previous one is just replace the zero, which ended up forbidding a sysfs entry uh, so replace that zero with this permission. So what does this permission say? S underscore I. You're saying write for the user and read for user group and others, which means the owner, which is root, will be able to write to this. Everyone else can read. And we do the same thing for message as well. The user can, uh, the root can write to it while everybody else can read. Now, let's go ahead and see what, what happens. So I already pre-compiled it, but I'm just going to do it once again. And then let's actually do a pseudo ins mod. And then we can do KO. I'm going to say counter equals 100. Uh, actually, before that, let's actually clear the message cache, make sure there is no messages in there, great. Let's 
makes it easy for us to actually work with the demos. Let's put counter equals 100. Actually put message equals hello world. Okay. And if you do a D message, as expected, we are seeing counter is 100 and the message is hello world, right? Now, if we go inside the sysfs directory and we go inside modules and you'd actually find that there is a module for hello world sysfs param. So we can go inside that. And notice that now a new folder appears called parameters. Do you see that? So let's go inside parameters and we would actually find that we see counter and message in here. As you can clearly see, permission wise, uh, root basically has read and write both, while everybody else only has read. So if I do a cat counter, I see this value is 100. If I see cat message, I actually see the value is hello world. Fantastic. Let's actually open up another terminal. Let's open up the code here. Now, what we've additionally done is apart from the printing in the module initialization, I'm also printing this when the module is about to exit once again, right? Now, in the normal case, if, if I were to go ahead and uh, just do a pseudo rm mod hello world, underscore sysfs param. Then, if I do a D message, I'd actually find that the parameter on exit is pretty much still the same, right? As expected, counter is 100 and message is hello world, okay. Well, let's actually insert this once again with actually the same values. Uh, looks like I'll have to so pseudo in smart KO. Let's actually put counter equals 100, message equals hello world. If I do a D message, of course, I should be able to see the 100 and hello world. Now, if you go to sysfs, you know, become the root user. Uh, had to go out of it once and then go back inside it again. And we can see the value of uh, counter and the value of message is pretty much what we passed during module initialization. Now let's actually do an echo 200 inside counter and echo hello world to message, right? And now when we go back to the other terminal and remove the module, and do a D message, what you'd find is now the changed values are being printed right on exit, which is counter is 200 and the message is hello world. So if you notice the, the best part about actually allowing the parameters to be mapped into sysfs is that we can change their values at runtime, okay? Uh, and, and much later, you know, you can, or you can even look it up yourself how you can uh, create entries in sysfs, monitor changes, and you know, get informed by having different getters and setters and whatnot. Now for our purpose, uh, this is good enough for now. As I said, we aren't trying to become a Linux device driver uh, programmer. The whole idea is to know enough about kernel modules so that we can start programming and looking at rootkits. Anyway. So this is very, very important uh, because as I said, we are going to be playing with many of these parameters as we move along. Great. 
So that's all I had in mind for this video. If you've enjoyed this, please do recommend to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.